we're on Twitter. Okay, we are getting close to the end of the conference. We are going to have Juan Pablo back with us. Um, and then it is time for cake. So last talk, everybody have the cake ready. Hi there, can you hear me? We can hear and we see your screen. Amazing, great. Wow, oh, it's been a long day. I'm really glad to be uh, on board. Thanks, thanks uh, very much to uh, all of you guys for the invitation, for giving us the opportunity to present our work. I'm going to present the KPHP fixture factories tonight. In Berlin, it's tonight. Uh, created by Nicolas Masson and myself. Um, that's the two of us a few weeks uh, after we met and uh, the beginning of a strong friendship and also professional um, um, work together. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, test fixtures and uh, the way to create them in a maybe more handy way than the way Cake uh, PHP does it uh, so far. When I met Nico, we started uh, writing tests for uh, a large project and uh, we got trapped by the number of fixtures we had to create for every test uh, as the, the, the project was already big, but even writing our own tests uh, at the present moment got uh, th the picture really large. Uh, we had to declare every time long lists of fixtures in our integration tests, and then we had to maintain them also. And uh, eventually uh, we couldn't understand our tests anymore. And this is Nico and I tried to understand uh, the test uh, we wrote some, some weeks only ago because uh, when your fixtures grow big, it's really difficult to, to get along with it. And so um, Nico came, came with the idea to create uh, dynamic fixtures, dyna dynamic uh, factories. Uh, the KPHP fixtures themselves are static, they are hard coded, they are shared across many tests once you have loaded them. And uh, there's that well-known pattern uh, of uh, fixture factories that's been used in other uh, programming languages in PHP 2. And Nico thought, well, uh, we have uh, actually a very powerful ORM in PHP, so let's use it and try to get a, a solution for our problem first. And um, as we kept on developing the project, we thought, now it's been uh, over a year and a half that we're working on it. We thought it would be time maybe to share it. So it's, uh, that's how we came up with the PHP plugin factory. Um, for, uh, I'll take this example through the, the presentation. Um, if you have, uh, let's take the example of user permissions, you'll have a user table that is associated to a user groups table, itself associated to a permissions table. And this is the way you are going to, to set the permissions of each users. And this is a, a belongs to many relation in both cases. So you have five tables. And if you want to create one user with a permission, you are going to create fixtures for a permission and then the pivot table, the user group table, the other pivot table, the user, and this is just for one user. So this is how, uh, fixtures tend to grow very quickly and they are difficult to read. This is a static test. Uh, this is a test the way uh, we would write it with the HP fixtures. Um, you are going to fetch the user that has the permission foo. So you are going to look through the fixtures and you'll figure, figure out that the ID of that uh, user is 45 or whatever. And another uh, inconvenient is that you still don't have your user, you have to create a query, you have to fetch it, and it's more work. And on top of that, you are interacting with the database while actually you just wanted a user, you didn't want to have it necessarily first in the database, then having to, pick, uh, to catch up, to, to pick it up. And this is how we write now tests with our factories. Um, there is no loading of fixtures whatsoever. You start your test, you create your user. So in that case, I will get into detail how this looks like, how we create the factories. But uh, you have your user factory, you instantiate it. 
knowing through the ORM the associations we have that method with that enables you to populate automatically data in the user groups table, in the permissions table, in the pivot table, and you create that one permission uh, named foo, get the entity, which is never going to persist. You can persist, I'll talk to about it later, but you have your user, which is an entity, and you can perform real unit tests without having to go through the, the database. So yeah, that's the idea of the factories. I'll go back to testing just to talk a little bit uh, about what tests should be in our opinion, but these are global uh, concepts. It's important that tests are readable. You want when you come back to your test to understand what's happening. It's actually a documentation tool eventually. When you read your test, you know, okay, this is what we expect from this method. They should be easy to write. You don't want to spend a lot of time writing your tests. Otherwise, you start um, wondering, do I have time to write one or not? They should be fast to write, and they should run fast too. Particularly, uh, unit tests should run like you should have uh, hundreds in a second. Integration tests, that's end-to-end -end tests, it's a bit different, but um, you want to keep them fast. Why do we write tests? Tests force you to write clean code. This is for me the first uh, advantage. If you struggle writing your tests, it could be due to the complexity of the code you are testing. So you might have actually to have a, a cleaner code, simpler code, that would be also easier to maintain later and more reusable. Uh, if your test can easily be read and understood, as I say, they document your source code. Whenever your code is refactored, features are added or external packages get updated, the tests ensure that your code retains integri in its integrity. So although they are code tests, to test your code, uh, I see more advantages before that by the, the fact that they clean up your code, they document it, and in the end, they're going to, to save you time because they, uh, they make your code uh, more maintainable. So if your code is a tree, consider uh, the test as its roots, it's its invisible part, it ensures that your code goes stable and does not get whipped out uh, by the first storm. Test anatomy, so how does a test look like? You are going to prepare some a scenario for your test, assert uh, what you, you act, act, and assert that uh, what you've done is uh, what you expected. So in the example of the permissions, a range is creating a user, creating a group, the permission, the pivot table. You're gonna check the permission of that user for that permission foo, and you'll expect that uh, that user has that permission. So in uh, using the factories, this is the pattern. You create on the fly your user, check that it has the permission, assert that it's true. And since we now, um, yeah, when you have a, 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 code, a, a test like this, you can read it, you can read what that user, what is the specificity of that user, it is associated as here, it is displayed in a certain way with a permission with a certain name. And it's fast to write. And because it's fast to write, you are going to write more tests. For example, in that case, if we want uh, admins to have admis uh, authorizations as well, guru to have administrations, a user with a right foo to have the authorization, and a user with the authorization bar not to have permission, we feed our test with uh, these four scenarios, thanks to the data provider uh, of the PHP unit uh, uh, test suite. This is something provided by PHP unit. And so you can run four times your test. Since we're dynamic, you can very, very easily uh, create that user with that permission and then assert uh, what you expected. You can see some activity on Slack. So I'm gonna have a... Okay, yeah, disable Slack uh, noise. All right, some people are having a cake here. Yum, yum, yum. 
Um, you can also write integration tests easily. Uh, I'll go back to that. I will show examples. I have a little sandbox, but uh, if this is a BHAT test, uh, you can easily create your user. I'll show what's behind. But the idea is that since you can very easily create a user with a given ID, um, you can easily, sorry, you can also easily create a user with a permission. It will make also the writing of integration tests, for example, with BIAT much easier. I'll get back to that. Uh, I'll try to put my hands into, um, uh, into the code. So how do we set up the package, uh, the installation with Composer? We have a version one for KPHP 3 and a version two for KPHP 4. Uh, you just need to load the plugin. You need to replace the listeners in phpunit.xml. There's a, a command for that, we'll do it for you. The package comes up with another listener, which is actually an extension of the KPHP test listener, uh, doing less. It's only doing less than uh, uh, the native KHPHP listener. I'll get back to that. You can bake your factories. So with the command uh, fixture factory minus A, bake fixture factory minus A, you are um, going to bake factories for all your models. You can specify a given model. You can uh, specify a plugin, the cake way as usual. And uh, there's a small extra, it's the migrator, which is going to help you running your migrations prior to your tests. And this is, to my point of view, one of the, the big advantage. It's not really of the factories, but of this new way to, um, to create fixtures. We don't drop tables at no time. We truncate them before every test with some MySQL, with one, some SQL, so it works for MySQL, but for Postgres and uh, SQLite too we run a query that's going to clean up the dirty tables and every test starts with a new fresh uh, database but the database the schema itself doesn't change so if you run your tests on monday in the morning the migrations will run and that's it for the rest of the week if you don't have a new migration that comes into play if you write a migration in a feature the migrations runs every time in bootstrap uh, goes very fast and um, the big advantage is that the migrations are taken into consideration in the tests. They are part of the test uh, cycle. So you indirectly test your migrations. Uh, test DB and um, productive DB are exactly uh, have the same, same schema and uh, you don't have to, to care about uh, how to maintain the schema. So that's for the setup. If we have baked our factory, this is how a factory looks like. It is a um, class that extends the base factory uh, method. There is, uh, you will have to specify which table the factory is associated to, associated to so it knows in which, um, in which table uh, in the database it, base it should insert data. It knows the relationships um, through the associations. And there is a set default template method where you are going to um, generate your default value. Some, for some, you don't care. Some, are, some fields are required. So you will definitely have always to provide uh, a field there. So in, the, in our case for the users factory, you would, uh, we use faker. So fantastic uh, package with faker you would fake a username a password an email and you're done and if you have a new required fields in your table you just add a line and that's it and uh, inside of the factory you can add your own business logic if you're going to create many users with permissions regularly create a with permission method which uh, encapsulates what we, we've seen before, give it a string, and you've got your user with its permission created. If you want to create an admin with permission admin. So this is the most valuable part of the factory is that you are going to, scar to carve them at your business uh, needs. And uh, if you want to create um, a user in a fantastic mood, put your code into there, return this so everything is chainable, 
and at the end uh, you get your entity so it's uh, it will make your tests very easy to write at least the arrange part when you are working with entities these are some examples so this is how to create a basic uh, user you will just call get entity and you got an entity return nothing is persisted so it's extremely fast if you need to persist it use persist if you want to make three, you just put three as an argument. Uh, if you want to make um, two of them having the username foo, go for it. If you want to create two, one with the username foo, one with the username bar, that's how you would do it. If you want to create one with belonging to a user group that has the name golfers, that's how you would do it. There are different ways to do it, huh? you will see, uh, when you start using it. You can put as a second parameter to the with uh, method another factory so it's associated with user groups put a user group factory in it and you can start again carving what's going to be inside that user group i'll give us uh, some example when i go to the send tool uh, sandbox tool later and if i want to create one user with two user groups one user group golfers and the user group swimmers you can do it this way and there's also a little uh, nice to have uh, into brackets if you want to uh, put in the in the string the number of user groups you want to create here you're going to create three users each of them belonging to five user groups each of this user group having a permission so you can really start creating data uh, in mass if you had to create for example that 28th line the, that last line in fixtures you're done. It's very complicated, and um, yeah, it's not fun. The, um, the point is that very often when you look at open source code, these are projects that are relatively small. Generally, they don't have so much fixtures, so they get along okay with the static fixtures. But uh, companies, big projects, they're not public. They often rely very much on the ORM, on the entities, on the tables and everything turns around the database. So most of your tests, you're going to be at some point confronted to creating entities and their associations. And this is where uh, this um, plugin, it's actually, it's a must have. And I think it's um, the next step after the fixtures. The fixtures are, are good, I mean, they do their job, but I think it's, it's time really for, for KPHP to, to provide a, a good tool to, uh, to to generate data so i'm insisting on the fact that you can get the entity or you can persist it and generally a unit test uh, doesn't interact with the database per se i don't care if you call it unit test but what's important to know is that this is going to slow down your code this is going to slow down your tests and even also your code um, I have, uh, yes, I'll go to performance after that slide, but this is just back to the test life cycle. What happens in the, the bootstrap.php of your test migrations get run or not, huh, if they were already run before. If you switch branches, you're going to be in a state where a migration was run, you go back to master and your database is in a state that doesn't correspond to the migrations anymore. The migrator will drop all the tables for you We'll run the migrations fresh, so it's really invisible. Um, and it documents also your migrations, like you know really where your migrations are, but generally you should know where your migrations are located. I guess. The test starts, we drunk at the dirty tables, and that's it. Nothing more is done, so the tests are fast. This is the comparison of performance, so you have three um, curves. The x-axis, you have the number of tests. It's a pilot study I did. Uh, when you look at this presentation um, live uh, online, you can click on the pilot study, it's on GitHub. So on the x-axis, you're going to have the size of your app, the number of the tests, and in the y, uh, y-axis, the time spent for the tests to run. In uh, the red line is the dynamic uh, test fixtures. Uh, the fixture using the fixtures factory, so the, yeah, the dynamic test fixtures, non-persisted. So you can see that it's no time. If you don't persist, 
if you create your entities on the fly like this, it's virtually invisible. What's going to take time later is uh, maybe if your tests are longer. If uh, you persist, it's longer. But if you compare it to persisted with the legacy uh, approach, which is the dark uh, uh, blue line, it's still much faster. The problem of the cake PHP fixtures is that if you have a class and you load your users and you have 20 tests inside your class, every test is going to use all the users that the other tests also need. So the growth of the load uh, in, the, uh, in the test is hyperbolic, it's square. The more tests you have, it's the square of the number of tests. But yeah, enough numbers and things like that. Um, yeah, it's just to make you aware that not persisting is a good thing. And uh, the fixtures, the static fixtures, they don't allow you, they force you to persist. I'm really quickly going to talk compatibility. So as I said, it works in Cake 3, in Cake 4. Both have the same fix fixtures. There's no uh, trade back. It's just uh, for, for compatibility that we have the two branches. But both do the same, work the same. Uh, it's compatible with the static fixtures. Sorry, someone. Mute the channel. Um, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't dare clicking anything anymore today. Uh, compatibility, yeah, with the static fixtures. So if you load fixtures in your test, for whatever reason, you are still in the process of refactoring, it's still okay. It's still good. So there will be um, the tables will be truncated, so it's compatible with the static fixtures, and it works on MySQL, SQLite, and Postgres. So I see I have a bit of time. I'm going to uh, do something crazy. I'm going to to code live. <laughs> um, you should see now some code here. And I'm going, what I wanted to show you simply is um, how fast it is to write uh, your, um, your factory, your, your entities. So if you are, for example, going to create a user, you are done. You've got your entity. I'm going to show you what's inside that entity. Um, I'll run the tests. So this is the entity, the username is populated randomly, the email, the password. Um, if I want to give it, I have the permission, a method that's already written, so I'll just do that. I'm going to do, instead of showing the entity, I'll show you the entity to array. It really returns an entity, a cake PHP entity. So it's more or less the same as if you had done new entity, put some association in it, save entity. It's the same. Uh, we bypass the model events, though you are able if you want to still uh, listen to the whatever before save, before Marshall, all that. By default, we bypass them because the aim is to write, to create fast and without interaction with your model, with your, uh, what's, what's going on. And more or less reproducing what the fixtures, the static fixtures do. If you still want to listen to them, you can. So there you are, we have our entity, and we have our user group, uh, all call owner, yeah, and the permission foo. Uh, what, can, what can we do? If we want, if uh, yeah, if we want to create a users group, and um, my user should belong to three users group, and um, the, each of these users groups should have, let's say, two permissions. Oh, this is uh, exactly well. It produces me what I wanted. I have. Uh, one, two, three uh, user groups, and each of them have one, two, one, two, one, two permissions. 
prospect. No, maybe not something you really want for permissions, but at some point you are going to need to create special cases. Uh, as I was saying, well, I mean, that's enough. I, you just in install it, play around with it. It's documented uh, on GitHub on the package uh, site. And um, I'm sure you'll have fun with it. I wanted to show also the. Uh, sorry. Oh, yeah, Nico, thanks. Nico wrote, uh, I should show the, per the difference when we persist. So I'm going to persist it. And if we persist it, uh, I have an ID. It's in the database. You are, and that's it, more or less, actually. Uh, you just get the ID created. Uh, what you see is that there's an offset, a random offset, that is created as an ID. You don't start from one. You will start from somewhere. And after that, um, it does, it's not random. All your RIDs are not going to be random. It's just one offset, and then it's based on that. We had the request from, from some users in which cases um, starting always with one would not catch some some uh, some problems some errors so yeah there you are and of course uh, you can create several all this i can create it 10 times in this case i am going to get several entities so i can't do a two array And uh, yeah, well, I get an, an array of uh, 10 users having all these uh, uh, ca characteristics defined uh, here in the bit. But again, I encourage you to uh, write your own uh, methods, depending as, as soon as you see, oh, I'm creating that user, I'm creating that entity ever and ever with the same scenario, you're good for creating a method uh, in your factory. I wanted to show also quickly uh, on BHAT how to write tests. Um, so the, um, the context is a user permission. If I create the background, I'm going to create a user with ID1. I'm going to log in with a certain permission. I'll call that URL. And what I want is that uh, I want to be allowed to see that, uh, to access to that URL. The logic behind is that the name of the permission here is the name of the controller. And admins have access to everything and gurus have access to everything. So this is, uh, well, it's gonna be Christmas. It's gonna be all green, uh, running the test. Not much to see there, but what happens if I click on I log in with, well, let's start with, I create a user with ID one. It's very simple create a user uh, with the ID here. You could give uh, other, other parameters, of course, inside, but the fact that you have the factory, you create in a, you write your test very quickly. I log in with the permission uh, users, so I'm going to create a user with a permission given in string, log it in, Login is something I wrote, but many people, uh, that was often a, a topical conversation on Slack, simply uh, write the user in your session, in your back. Call that URL. This is already all integrated by KHP, uh, the, um, the integration text uh, trait of KPHP. So I call that URL and uh, I should have access assert that the response is okay. So as you can see, uh, we didn't invent much. We just helped the um, developer. We tried to help the developer to uh, deal better with the arrange part of the code where you are creating your entities. And the thing is that since you write tests quickly and readably, you can write more of them. So once uh, you have uh, that thing, you are going to create that for admin, for guru. Uh, if you have permission foo and you want to see users, you're going to be redirected. If you have permissions foo and user, uh, you're going to be uh, accessed. You can have access. If 
I click on there, click on there, I've uh, created a with permissions plural where you can put two permission. And there it's again very simple with a factory, you create a user, two permissions, get entity, and you are done. So yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. Just last thing I wanted to show you is just uh, how fast it is to write a BHAT test like this, given uh, I log with auto, auto completion, I log it with permission. I'm going to rewrite something we, which is already there, but um, this is really something the client or your uh, product owner can, can write, and then the developers behind can, uh, can create uh, the code with the help of the factories very fast. Yeah, I think I'm done actually with all I wanted to tell you. In conclusion, so this is how you will install uh, the package, Composer Require. Uh, this, is, uh, the, um, this is the GitHub uh, repository. If you want to go to the presentation uh, while looking at this, I will share the link. This is done with um, this is JavaScript presentation, so you can really, you can click on it and you have uh, the presentation. Acknowledgements, uh, I want to say thank you to Zuluru, Benser, and Dreaming Mind, which have supported us at uh, the beginning and also um, talking about performance issues. Big thanks to you, and well, last but not least, thanks to the PHP community. It's really fun to develop in PHP. We know that uh, Sometimes the, the, we'd like the, the, the framework to, to be a bit more efficient. We write the stuff. So feel free to, to use the, that uh, fixture factories. If you have questions, just ask now or later. And uh, if you need some help in your project, give us a shout. We'll be very glad uh, to help. That's it uh, for me. Thank you for attending. And uh, while wow, that was a really long day, I'm very happy to close it. And um, see you very soon. Bye-bye. Yep. Thank you. And thank